We are back for Do This, Not That, and today we're going to talk about two very simple things that can be a game changer for your marketing. Cost you nothing, super easy, and they're both about segmentation, right? And you may have zoned out now and say, segmentation, I know all about that, but no, these two things I think most marketers are sleeping on. So the first one is click-based segmentation. This is a gold mine. And before we get into why it's a gold mine, I totally get it that when people are buying from us, subscribing from us, downloading content from us, getting those discount codes from us, we want to ask them a lot of questions. We wish we could have a hundred fields on our forms and we can collect all this information from people, but we can't do that. And the reason we can't do that is for every additional must fill field that you have on a form when you're collecting information from people, you will lose at least 8% of those people filling out the form. That is the stat. So what can we do to get really valuable information about the people in our database so we could send them really tailored stuff or our salespeople could follow up knowing exactly what it is that they need? And that's where click-based segmentation comes in. When you send out, let's say you send out an email. Okay, let's say I sent you out an email. And in the email, it said, here's a free guide for marketers who have big email deliverability problems. Download here. Now, if you click on that, what does that tell me? It tells me, okay, this recipient, I know what their pain point is. They have deliverability problems with their email. Now, if I'm a company that sells email deliverability solutions, or let's say I'm just an email sending platform, our salespeople then can follow up and say, our platform is really great with for email deliverability. We can tailor our messaging back to that person specifically because we know what their pain point is. And how did we get that information? We used the content of what we were promoting and we made it very intentional. And then we go back and we take all the clicks on those very intentional email promotions that we are doing and we associate those clicks on that topic back to that record. Okay, let's say I sent you an email and I said the one on how to easily manage employee benefits. I would now know the people that clicked on that are struggling to manage employee benefits. And if I sell HR software, then my salespeople can lead with that pain point. Let's say I was on the consumer side and I sent out an email that says, are you up on the new swimsuit trends? The people that click on that. People that buy bathing suits, buy them a lot. They buy them every season. That's what they do. Okay, so now I know, okay, these are the bathing suit people in my database. So instead of sending out your emails and saying, wow, what can we do to get the highest click-through rate? No, that's not what you want to do all the time. You take certain emails and you be very intentional about those emails. Those emails should be speaking to very specific pain points. And then you take the people that are clicking on those links about those pain points and you then associate those clicks to those individuals and you tag them with that piece of information. And now you can market them. You can segment them based on that. You can also go backwards. Go back to all of your emails and look what those emails were about. And the people that clicked on those specific topics of what you were promoting in those emails, you can bucket them. And all of a sudden you have these segments that are based on people's actions from your emails that can be a game changer in terms of performance. So it's not always how do we get the highest click through rate? It's let's try to get people that are really interested in this thing to click. And then we can then market to them moving forward. Now, the bigger thing in segmentation in general that I think marketers sleep on is you often are doing segmentation when you're sending out, let's say, an email marketing campaign. You are segmenting. It could be demographics on the consumer side. It could be firmographics on the business side. But you have a segment. You're targeting people by industry or job function or income or if they want to go golfing or boating or whatever. You are segmenting them, but if you're segmenting them and you're not telling them the segment that they are in, when you segment them, you are wasting your time. The secret sauce to marketing is telling the person who 
They are. So when you segment, you want to tell them that you are segmenting. What do I mean by that? Okay. So let's say I was targeting HR professionals in whatever campaign I was sending out. That is the segment I'm going after. In that subject line, I put just for HR pros. In that headline, I put just for HR pros. On that landing page, I put just for HR pros. I am now telling the HR professional that I know you're an HR professional and this email's for you, it's not for everybody else. And as an example, when you put the person's job function that you are marketing to in the subject line back to them, your performance goes up by over 38%. Your open rate goes up by over 38% just by telling them the job function that you are, that they know they have and that you know who they are. The same thing is for industry. If you put the person's industry in the subject line, trending in the retail sector, the average open rate goes up by over 30% because all of a sudden the person, wait a minute, this is for me and not for everybody else. And that is how you win. And on the consumer side, you could do things like fitness tips for your fifties and beyond, or enjoy local discounts in Miami this weekend. You're carving out that you're marketing people in Miami or back to school deals for busy parents. You know that these people are busy parents, right? Love cooking. Check out these must have kitchen gadgets because you're targeting people that are interested in cooking. If you are segmenting and you're not telling the person who they are, then you are not doing it right because that is how you see increased performance. All we want to know is that whatever we are getting is not for everybody else. It's for us. So segmentation without telling the recipient who they are is not going to get you to the finish line. And this is how you see these increased performance. What you always want to remember as a marketer is the sooner you tell somebody who they are, the sooner they want to engage with your content. So those are some segmentation things I would be thinking about. All right, before we get into since you didn't ask, which is the ridiculous portion of this weird, crazy podcast, I want to let you know that this podcast is exclusively presented by Marigold is my email sending platform. And if you listen to this podcast, you hear me talk about Marigold a lot, and that's because they're awesome. Why are you on a bad email sending platform? Why are you banging your head against the wall when you could be on a great platform. If you're a small business, a medium business, an enterprise level company, Marigold is the roll up of sale through and cheetah digital and my Emma and campaign monitor and all these awesome platforms. Okay. Check them out at meetmarigold.com. There is a better way to send out email. I'm telling you, check them out. And if you want to DM me on LinkedIn, I will connect you with the best people at Marigold. I'll get you all set up but you got to check them out at meetmarigold.com, an incredible email platform. All right, let's get into since you didn't ask. I was just involved with a team building exercise. So my agency got brought on as a new vendor and this marketing executive was like, okay, we want to have all of, they were bringing on not just us, but all these other kind of like vendors and they wanted to do this big marketing powwow where we're all on the same page. Right? So I'm on this Zoom with 15 other people that I don't know. And it was a team building exercise, this icebreaker thing where we were all supposed to go around on Zoom. And the they, they said, we want everyone to talk about whatever their favorite guilty pleasure movie is, which by the way, is a horrible thing for anybody to ask me because I, I have epically horrible taste in anything related to TV and movies. So they're like, okay, so everybody's going to go around. Now, first off, barely listen to anybody. Anytime there's any kind of icebreaker, I don't really listen to what other people are saying. I'm purely focused on what is it that I'm going to say. And I have like almost no ear open to what other people are saying, because who really cares what you're saying? I need to figure out what I'm going to say. Right? So I was listening a little bit, but I was really focused on me, but here's and some of the people said such embarrassing movies. So their favorite guilty pleasure movies. Somebody said Twilight, which is horrendous. Even though I did like that movie, it's embarrassing. Somebody said Mamma Mia, another great movie, but I would never say that. Somebody said Grease. Are you kidding me? What? Somebody said Transformers. Now that person should go and hide. 
first of all, Transformers is actually a horrible movie. And if that's your guilty pleasure, then like, what is up with you? That is weird. And then the best one, the one I almost fell over, somebody said Magic Mike. I'm like, you can't say Magic Mike. That's not okay. You can't do that. Okay. It's just really strange. So anyway, they came to me and they're like, okay, Jay, what is your thing? And I said, okay, I have two because of course I had to have two. I said, number one is Bridesmaids, which is just the greatest movie of all time. It literally might be the greatest movie of all time. And then the other one was Old School with Frank the Tank, Will Farrell being Frank the Tank and Vince Vaughn. Old School is an underrated movie and I don't know why it's not talked about more. And I think about Frank the Tank all the time because in that movie, these young kids are like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? He's like, I got a great little weekend plan. I'm going to go to Home Depot and I'm going to do all this stuff. And I'm like, that's me. I'm the boring version of Frank the Tank now. I don't know what happened to me, but I relate to that movie. I love that movie. Anyway, I don't know what movie you would have picked, but if it's Transformers, then you need to get out more. I don't know what to tell you. You just got to get out more. All right. Thanks for listening to this thing. Leave it a review and uh, I'll check you later.